Hi, this is your host Sapna Bhartiya and welcome to TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us Johan Bjorkland, CEO of Beta.com. Johan, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you. It's great to be here, Sapnil. Perfect. Uh, since this is the first time we're talking, I would love to know a bit about Betacom. Tell us about the company. We have been around for about uh, 30 years. Uh, we've always been in wireless telecommunications. Uh, we have uh, built networks for the large carriers. Um, so we do deployment of 3G, 4G, 5G, and so forth. And uh, we have also deployed a bunch of venues, airports, large stadiums, hospitals, hotels, and so forth. So We've been in the industry for a long time. Uh, we are experts in wireless, uh, and uh, we've also launched a service as of last year for enterprises called 5G as a service, and uh, we're excited about that. If I ask you, I mean, if we live in, as people say, cloud native, cloud centric world, all the way if you look at, you know, <laughs> Tesla's, you know, they're kind of a smartphone or a smart IoT device, and all, but the backbone is connectivity as well. So if I ask you, in this cloud-centric, cloud network, cloud what is the role of networking? What is the role of connectivity? Connectivity is in everything we do. It really is. Uh, I mean, all of us, we probably, the last thing we do when we go to bed is probably touch our smartphones. The first thing we do is, uh, is probably touch our smartphones as well. Uh, but if you look at uh, the evolution of that and beyond smartphones, it's really around connecting everything that can be connected. Um, so... IoT, the Internet of Things, is really uh, driving connectivity into, you know, shoes, uh, things we wear, cars, and so forth, right? So more than just smartphones, it's, it's, uh, it's these devices that are being connected to, to, uh, to cloud solutions and so forth, right? That essentially monitors everything, everything we do and uh, everything we want to do. And it actually goes beyond just smart IoT devices. We can also look at edge data center, which are like more or less like resource constrained data center at the edge. And that's where I want to know about uh, what role you think that uh, the evolution in, you know, even the networking technology like 4G, 5G, they are going to play in, in the evolution of these technologies as well. And this actually brings us to an interesting question, and that is... Uh, you know, what is 5G? What is, what is the intent of 5G? Well, the, the 5G was really invented for uh, massive IoT. So lots and lots and lots of devices being connected at the same time. Um, and in order, to, in order to take advantage of this, um, you, you can, of course, build a lot of logic into each device, into each IoT device, and you can make the decisions autonomous there. But that is a very expensive solution. So what you want to do instead is you want to you want to put the logic in um, the edge cloud instead, right? So that you can build all the logic there, and then you can have really sort of cheap and dumb devices, if you will, that are out on on, on the edge, right? And um, but in order for that to work, you need very low latency, and you need the ability to connect a lot of devices to the network at the same time. That is what five G is intended for. It was invented for that. And that's the that's the real differentiator besides speed uh, versus 4G. And since you once again brought up this topic, I also, I mean, we cover 5G here a lot. But there's a difference between you know the icon that we see on our iPhone about you know which network you're using. 5G is much more than that. Also, if I'm not wrong, two or three years ago, <laughs> because of COVID, we don't know when it happened. But the U.S. government also released some spectrum. Otherwise, getting you know a spe it was very expensive. You have to spend million of dollars. Now uh, companies can build their private networks uh, using 5G technologies. So can you also talk about you know the difference there? And how 5G private networks are going to enable a lot of organizations to do things that they could not have done otherwise. Yeah, great. So a lot of questions baked into one there. So I'm going to try to address one them one by one. Uh, the, so first of all, let's go back to 3G and 4G and the introduction of 4G. Um, when the smartphones were launched first, it wasn't 3G. And the smartphones needed so much data that it just basically made the 3G networks crumble. And that's the reason why 4G became so important. It needed to be rolled out quickly to enable all the data traffic being, being driven from these smartphones. 5G instead was, was created actually for, for um, massive IoT, like I said before. Uh, 5G certainly makes smartphones better as well, but it's it's I would say that it's incrementally better. It's not it's not a lot better. Um, what what it, what what I what five G is is intended to do is to really to help enterprises um, 
drive IoT solutions and make their business processes more efficient. Um, and to your point, yes, the government did introduce uh, spectrum, private wireless spectrum under 3.5 gigahertz uh, a few years ago. And I think that was a genius move actually by the government. I don't say that a lot, by the way, but in, in this case it was. Um, because this allows uh, uh, companies, enterprises to own and control their own wireless um, private networks. And, and by doing that, they can build their networks inside of their own firewalls and, and thereby uh, not allowing data to go out outside of their firewalls, which is, which is increasingly important due to um, uh, cybersecurity threats and so forth. The other thing it does um, is th this this spectrum is actually dedicated. So each enterprise gets its own dedicated spectrum. That differs a lot from Wi-Fi uh, because Wi-Fi is public spectrum, which means that anybody can use it at any time. So you may have you know, three Wi-Fi networks or you can have 15 Wi-Fi networks in the same spectrum. And that's often what drives congestion in these networks. It's not that Wi-Fi necessarily is a bad technology, it's just that it drives connections. So if you're an enterprise and you have business critical applications, Wi-Fi is usually not a great, um, a great wireless solution for these, these type of applications. That's what we see more and more and more right now. And that's where private, private wireless becomes so important. And it's really a differentiator at this point in time. Here we are kind of, you know, uh kind of, you know, hopping between, you know, cellular and, you know, private. So if you can also kind of help us better understand what is the difference between, you know, private 5G versus carrier 5G so that we do understand what we're talking about. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. So first of all, the technology is actually the same. So whether it's 4G or 5G, the technology that the carriers are using versus what's being used for private wireless is exactly the same. The difference is the spectrum, um, the 3.5 gigahertz spectrum where enterprises can own and control their own wireless solution and they can, it can sit inside of their own firewalls. Uh, that is the main difference. And um, uh, the carrier solutions are of course large networks uh, and they're, they're meant to serve everyone everywhere. So, so, so there you have the coverage. You will never sort of get the same big coverage with the private wireless network. What you instead build those networks for is to cover a small area, but you make sure that that quality in that very specific area is perfect. It's what you need. And then also that that data doesn't have to leave your own firewall. So, so that's the main difference, I would say. But actually the main differentiator, I'd say, between private wireless uh, or for private wireless is actually against Wi-Fi. Um, Wi-Fi has for a long time been the, the de facto sort of cheap solutions that 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 enterprises have been using but it just doesn't it's not good enough uh it lacks mobility um you don't control the spectrum like we talked about before so if you don't control the control the spectrum you don't control the quality of your solution either and and uh, that's that's the main differentiator with with, with, with private uh wireless and so i think the way i look at it is Private wireless is more competing against Wi-Fi, I would say, than than the carrier networks. Uh, it, it, it's very, but but there's actually a need for all three. You you can't just replace one with the other. You actually need all three, and there are use cases for all three of them. One more thing I want to ask is, whenever these new emerging technologies, though, in today's world, technologies are coming so fast that even we are talking about three or four years ago that when government released those spectrum. Uh, what kind of adoption you're seeing for private 5G? Sometimes there are a lot of early adopters, industries, you know, there are tech companies who embrace it, and then you have to go and do a lot of education for other businesses to embrace it. So what kind of adoption you're seeing uh, in this space and what is driving that adoption? Yeah, we see a lot of interest around private wireless right now. It's actually both 4G and 5G. Um, and... Uh, one of the main drivers uh, behind it is is uh, is really global supply chain and global supply chain issues that we're having, and it's become increasingly difficult uh, after the pandemic. Um, we're, we've been buying more and more and more. Um, uh, a lot of things that we're buying here in the U.S. coming from Southeast Asia and China. Um, so there are a lot of choke points in the global supply chain, 
um, think about what's happening right now. For example, Shanghai is completely shut down because of COVID. And one of the major factories in Shanghai is Tesla. So you can imagine the kind of impact that has for people that have ordered the Tesla right now. Um, so, so if, you know, if, if, if we can somehow automate um, our processes around manufacturing is that we can start, we can start um, offsetting the labor arbitrage, the difference basically in cost of labor here onshore versus what we have in China and, and companies can bring back manufacturing into the US and thereby reducing um, its dependencies on global supply chain. Uh, so that's one, of the, that's one of the major areas that we're seeing right now is, is companies, enterprises, manufacturers looking at how can we take advantage of automation and, and 5G and, and private wireless 4G as well fits right in there. There's so many use cases that enables that to happen around automation, right? So, 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 but to your point then about how, how fast this is adopted, it takes time, right? Because this it didn't take, the global supply chain wasn't built, you know, over one year or two years. It's been in, 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 in work for decades. So, you know, changing, changing that entire process in terms of how companies will work and how they automate and can do things more onshore it's going to take time. It's an evolution, but we're absolutely part of that in beta. I mean, we're working with a lot of manufacturers right now. Uh, we have a lot of proof of concepts where we're trying out different solutions for how to, how to automate their business processes and taking critical business processes, business applications, and moving it off of Wi-Fi or Ethernet and into private wireless instead. Uh, we are looking at some of the use cases, though, kind of Tesla has not only redefined electric vehicles, they have also redefined you know, assembly lines as well. Um, so sometimes we also see we are heading, you know, not heading, we are almost uh, there. It's actually these buzzwords are like tricky. Industry 4.0. Can you also talk about um, uh, the role of 5G in, you know, industry uh, 4.50, or if you can share some use cases or examples? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So industry 4.0 for me is, is all about automation. It's really, really all about automation. Um, if you if you take something like the example I used before, right, uh, around robotics, in order to automate your your manufacturing process, uh, robotics come into play. So if you if you um, if you have uh, you put all the logic in the robots itself, uh, they're going to be quite expensive to to uh, to build per per rob robot. If you, however, put the logic instead in the in the edge cloud, uh, you can reduce the cost per unit. So you can reduce the capital investment for for really automating uh, your manufacturing process. But that also re that requires five G. That requires an ultra fast um, connection, so very low latency, basically. So that's a good use case for private private wireless five G. There are also a lot of use cases already now that can be introduced just using. Um, private wireless 4G as well. So if we go back to manufacturing, um, if, you, if you think about the assembly lines, assembly lines often have to be re reconfigured. And so these assembly lines are often on wheels, so you can reconfigure it easily. However, they're tethered through an ethernet cable uh, to the wall. And that is usually the long pole in the tent. That takes a long time to reconnect uh, both physically and logically all these ethernet lines. Um, those Ethernet lines can be easily replaced by private wireless 4G today and, and thereby, you know, introduce a lot more flexibility onto the manufacturing floor. So private wireless, both 4G and 5G, uh, both have a lot of different use cases, specifically in manufacturing. You talked about automation, and if I'm not wrong, uh, automation is more or less about software. Uh, automation also means AIML. Uh, and today, most of the software stack is open source as well. So can you also talk about, uh, I mean, I'm once again bundling a lot of things together, but uh, when we do look at um, 5G private network, uh, the role all these emerging technologies are going to pay, because uh, what I feel is that it's not going to be one monolith going to drive the whole industry. So what we're seeing right now is we're seeing a lot of uh, uh, smaller solution, point-to-point -point solution. And... And, and, and staying on the topic of manufacturing, they, they're using old equipment, equipment from the 50s and 60s sometimes, right? So, uh, but, but 
even that old equipment can actually be be uh, retrofitted with new technologies such as the ones that you're talking about, so that you can add wireless devices there that measures the efficiency of of the machinery, for example, um, when the machinery needs to be uh, maintained, serviced, and so forth, um, and 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 collecting a lot of data around the usage of that, right? So that's where these type of technologies, machine learning and so forth, come into play. Um, you, you, you can basically connect a pretty cheap wireless device there that connects to a backend device in the edge cloud with, with the capability of machine learning. And they can learn characteristics of an old machine from the 50s or 60s, like a drill, for example. And it can learn when it needs to be serviced, uh, if something is not running right and so forth. And then you can stop the manufacturing process. Uh, before something goes wrong and you, you you waste time and you potentially have um, you potentially ruin your weaver yield. So th- these these type of technologies are actually being introduced right now, and it's not necessarily that you need to buy completely new equipment. Um, it it could also be retrofitted with pretty cheap wireless solutions using that technology that you just mentioned there. Excellent. Uh, with every evolution of or emergence of every you know next generation of technologies, we do see emergence of new leaders, and these leaders are not specific companies, but you know emergence of new industry. You did talk a lot about manufacturing, but uh, because of this five G uh, or industry four zero, how do you see what kind of new use cases, or new company, or new industries we will see which will emerge and which will lead the world? We see a lot of different. Um... Uh, industries embracing the use of uh, of private wireless. Another industry that we haven't talked about is airlines, for example. Uh, airports, airlines, um, today, uh, for, there are business-critical applications that are being run on Wi-Fi. And um, a lot of the times, the plane come in with hundreds and hundreds of passengers, and they all fire up their, their, their smartphones, right? Their devices, their iPads, and so forth, using that Wi-Fi. Now the business critical applications go down. So this could be luggage scanning, or it could be uh, automated onboarding processes that some airlines are using and so forth. So what we're seeing is airports and airlines are starting to look at private wireless to to offload some of these business critical applications so that they, they can get the quality and also the security that they need for these specific applications. So that's another industry that that I'm extremely bullish and excited about that are starting to to really experiment and, and deploy private wireless as well. Johan, thank you so much for taking time out today. And um, of course, not only talk about uh, private 5G versus 5G versus Wi-Fi, but also what kind of things we should be getting excited about, what kind of industries we'll see emerge and evolve from this. So thanks for those insights as well. And I would love to have you back on the show because this is a topic which is evergreen uh, and, and uh, also of my own interest. So thank you for your time today. Well, thank you so much, Fatnil. Really appreciate being here. Thank you.